An economy struggling, haunted by its own zero COVID policy and constant lockdowns. China's central bank earlier today trimming lending rates for the second time this year, taking its key rate down 10 points to 2.75 percent. That, as the latest economic data showed, there was need for more stimulus to support the economy. Retail sales and industrial production rose slower than expected last month, as did total exports out of China. Now, this has caused much concern in Beijing. Add to this the mortgage woes. China's once stellar property sector has sharply declined during the last few months, with both new investment and sales down sharply. China's struggle is also tied to its unemployment rate, with youth unemployment touching 20%. And let's get more on this from Jacob Gunter, senior analyst at the Mercator Institute for China Studies. Uh, welcome to DW, Jacob. Um, we see the central bank intervening for the second time uh, this year. Do you see more than just macroeconomic factors at play here? Yeah, there, there are certainly uh, more than just the macroeconomic factors. Um, uh, and, and when you look at this 10 basis points uh, uh, reduction, um, it's, it's, it's quite notable because it's the opposite of what's happening everywhere else in the world. Um, everyone else is ratcheting up their rates in China. They're, they're lowering it um, effectively because they have the opposite problems that we have in the United States and Europe. Um, consumption is uh, incredibly low and weak um, hmm. relative to supply. So they're, they're definitely trying to keep the economy from kind of falling out. Um, in large part because of the slump in investor and consumer confidence is coming as a result of China's zero COVID policies. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it maintains the zero COVID approach, um, consumer consumer investor confidence is going to be low. That you know they're not. It's not that people aren't spending because uh, you know the uh, the interest rates are are too high. Um, they're they're not spending because they're afraid that they might suddenly be locked down um, in in one of these citywide lockdowns that we see right. again and again. Jacob, why does Beijing keep holding on to the zero COVID strategy if it does have these serious ramifications for the economy? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's two main factors. Um, the, the first is a bit less political. It's just a bit more realistic, which is that um, China has effectively not lived with COVID the way um, much of the rest of the world has. So um, there would there would be legitimate economic chaos if COVID suddenly were to rip through the entirety of the country. Um, they, there isn't any built-up immunity. They don't have. They refuse to import the mRNA vaccines. They don't have as a, a, you know very advanced healthcare system. And there's a lot of vaccine hesitancy in China. So there, there is that very kind of legitimate traditional um, justification for for taking on these economic costs. Mm. Um, the second factor, though, is Xi Jinping's own kind of political goals. He, you know, he's keen to stay in power at the end of this year at the next party congress, where he's presumed to stay on for his third term. Um, and he needs things to smooth as, sale, as as clearly and safely as possible. And he's really put his own name with um, and attached his own name to this zero COVID policy. So uh, the dear leader cannot be wrong, um, uh, especially in his hmm. lead up to uh, the lead up to uh, his, his bid to stay in power. Jacob Gunter, senior analyst at the Mercator Institute for China Studies. Jacob, thank you for your time. Thank you.